Uh, so the first person I'm going to invite up here is uh, Maria Owen. She's a good friend. Um, she's a career educator, and uh, you can either present from right here, or you can take the mobile mic. Uh, thank you for coming out tonight. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the history of the pension system, and um, Representative Lavia talked a little bit about the long history of it, and I'm going to go into it a little more in depth. So, slide. Here we are. The history, the here and now, and the future. Okay, we started in 1915 when we had Governor Dunn, and he thought that teachers should have pensions. It wasn't called TRS then. It was just a pension system, but that's when it started. In 1939, Social Security was offered to the state for its teachers that were on a pension. Uh, but the state thought it was too costly. So the legislators in Springfield decided no, they would stick with what we had, and they formally named it TRS, or Teacher Retirement System. In 1950, only 11 years later, the TRS was in trouble. It was 23% funded, and Adlie Stevenson was our governor then. All through this time, we were promised a pension, and teachers put their money in every paycheck. Now, somebody must have been suspicious that things weren't going to go along smoothly. Because in 1970, there was a new Illinois Constitution. And it put in very rigorous protections on our pension system, and I'll show you those later. But all through those times and all through those decades, teachers continued to put in their funds into the system. In 1989, Governor Thompson decided that we needed to do something about it and get a plan. So he put together a 40-year plan for payments. It didn't go very far because only a few years later in 1995, we got a new plan, this time a 50-year plan, to be 90% funded by the year 2045. And during all these years, teachers continued to put in their money. Next slide. Okay, in 2003, we were 48% funded. We were behind 43 billion, that's just the teacher pension. And the state borrowed $10 billion to put toward it, and that was Governor Bogoyevich. So he did do one good thing. Teachers continued to put in their money. 2006, 2007, uh, they cut the pension payments by $2 billion to pay other bills. Now, Everybody in this room should thank a teacher for that because they used the pension money for vital services for the state. Mental health, uh, transportation, whatever it was, they used the pension money for other things. If these things are important and they really needed to happen, then everybody in Illinois would have paid more taxes then for those things. But instead of charging the people of Illinois taxes, they took the money from the pension system and they paid for these vital services. And all that time, the teachers continued to put in their money. Uh, in 2008, the pension was $42 billion in debt, 63% funded. And the next year, Governor Quinn called together a pension modernization task force. And that was to look at what was going on with the pensions. And we have Ed Rosenthal in the audience, and he served on that state panel. And out of that, a number of things came about, but they looked at a lot of data. And of course, data is very important. But it's only important when the data goes along with what you want to believe. So if you go and collect all the data, and it doesn't go along with your preconceived idea, then you don't talk about it. And basically, that's what happened. And maybe Ed later can talk to us a little bit about that. Then in 2010, we got the Tier 2 pension, which was created. 
So here's what was put into the Illinois Constitution because in 1970, there must have been someone who was suspicious that the promises made may not be kept. It says, membership in any pension or retirement system of the state, any unit of local government or school district, or any agency or instrumentality thereof, shall be an enforceable contractual relationship, the benefits of which shall not be diminished or impaired. So the teachers continued to put their money into the pension system. So here we are, we're the here and now. We have about 390 active members of TRS and about 90,000 retired. I think it's close to 100,000 now. I might add, all those people take that money, either their pension or the money they earn, and they put it back into the economy. Now, since all of this has been up and, and frightening people, I think it's had a negative impact on the economy. My husband and I are both retired teachers. Our cars are 10 and 12 years old. Normal situation, we would have replaced at least one of them by now. But I think there are other people out there too who don't know what's gonna happen, so they're holding back and it's hurting the economy. So uh, this is retired member stats. Um, the average age is 70, they've had 28 years of experience, their pension's about $46,000. Oldest retiree, 107 years old, sadly she did pass away in the fall. Now I know you've heard, oh, those greedy teachers, they get those high pensions and whatever. There are some people who have very high pensions, but it is not the majority of TRS recipients. There are 18 pensions. 0 0.02 are between 200,000 and 250. Uh, 153 pensions, 0 0.17 are 150 to 200. Uh, about 1,900 are 2%. They're between 100 and 150,000, mostly administrators. And then the 33% are between 50,000 and 100,000. That's about a third of the pensions. And then more than half of the pensions are below $50,000. Now, next slide. Of those uh, lower, lowest pensions, 17,000 are less than $20,000 a year. And please remember that teachers don't get Social Security. The average statewide TRS is about $3,500 a month. We do not receive Social Security benefits, so if you were a teacher for your entire life, your sole income after retirement is TRS. Now, the state saves billions by not having to pay Social Security. It would be a lot more if they were paying Social Security. Uh, and private employers need to do that. Teachers also pay for their health care. Next slide. Here's some common misconceptions. Teachers also get Social Security. We don't get it. Um, converting to Social Security now would cost the state more money, and then they couldn't take their pension holidays. Teachers get free health care. No, we don't. Now, some pension pensioners in other state uh, pensions get free health care. Teachers do not. The average cost is 560 per month for retirees' health care. That's before they're eligible for Medicare. Uh, a defined contribution plan would cost the state less money. This came out of the Pension Modernization Task Force. They found that a defined contribution plan co actually costs more. And the state of Nebraska recently reverted back to a defined benefit plan after 20 years. Illinois pension benefits are overly generous. They are not. Illinois ranks in the bottom one-fifth of all states for retirement benefits for their state workers. In the bottom fifth. Illinois pensions are too costly. No. The normal costs across the five pensions is 26% under the national average. And Illinois costs for education are too high. No. Illinois ranks last. We're tied with Nevada for state funding for education. Illinois has a pension problem. If you take anything away tonight, we don't have a pension problem. We have a revenue problem. This, 
this also came out of the uh, Pension Modernization Task Force, and you can see I won't go through it, but the thing that's causing the issue is the employer contributions. Do you see them there, the 18.81539? Next slide. I'm hurrying, Fred. Governor Quinn's Pension Modern Modernization Task Force said, in sum, the subcommittee finds that the current benefit structure is not the primary contributor to the current pension crisis. The main culprit is the state's inability to fund its pension system according to actuarial principle. They also found that the cost to taxpayers of state-funded pension benefits is less than the private sector and less than public pensions in neighboring states. And I'll just show you real quickly. There's all our neighboring states. And uh, Illinois' cost is 6.63, so the lowest around. Uh, private sector costs employers about 10.6%, 6.3% Social Security, and then usually some kind of profit sharing or 401k. TRS, 6.63, so here's the future. Uh, if we cannot get our arms around this and fix it, we're going to have teacher shortages because, frankly, uh, if I was advising a young person now, I'm not sure I would tell them to become a teacher. Uh, there's an increased burden on homeowners if we shift this to the local districts. There's increased inequality of education across the state, and we already had such bad inequality in the state to begin with. And it will have negative economic effects, and poor schools produce a poorly educated workforce, and we don't need that. Uh, this is mainly where the information for this PowerPoint came from, so if you would like to look up anything, this is where I got most of the information. Thank you for listening. I'm going over to John.